Tomorrow, you are going to ride the cat 2021. Three slots. There is going to be always a worry that whether your slot will be easy or your slot will be difficult. If your slot is easy, what will happen to your scores if the others get easier and therefore higher marks? Similarly, some of you might be thinking, hey, what if I get higher scores, but will it be considered higher or will it get lower than they, it is uh, because somebody else was or somebody else's slot was a difficult slot? What I'll try to do in this very short video of two, three minutes, five minutes max, is to understand this normalization between the three slots and scaling of scores. I'm going to take an example of verbal ability. First, the basics of mean and standard deviation. I will not go into telling you how to do the mean and standard deviation, but I think that is important that you understand what is a mean and standard deviation. Let's look at it, what happens. Let's first understand the formula that the IIMs are using, the CAT guys are using. Let's say take a student who rode the CAT in the slot one of 28th November. What happens? Let's say this person's ROS score, ROS score in verbal is some RV1, ROS score one verbal. Now let's look at what happens. If we calculate the mean of and the standard deviation of all the students for verbal section in slot one, you're not going to do that, by the way. You will not know this. We will, if you give us your scores on day one, as well as the day on which the cat releases the uh, uh, your uh, marking sheet as such, the answer sheet, as they call it. But however, what the IAMs do, I'm going to put it up very simply on your screen. Let's say that you calculate the mean and the standard deviation of all the students for verbal section in slot one. Call them some M1 and SD1. You will get if you add the two of them, some number called G1. Now let's do it. What they do is they now again calculate the mean and standard deviation of all the two lakh students. Let's say the first slot has only 65,000 students. They calculate the mean and SD, the standard deviation. Then they calculate the mean and standard deviation of all the scores. Doesn't matter which slot you've written and which exam that you've written. Call it G, M plus SD, which is M is the mean of all the three slots put together, SD is the all the standard deviations put together. Then they say, hey, 0.1% of the students, 99.9 .9 percentile plus guys, in the same section in English, of slot one, they calculate again the mean of the raw scores. Again, the raw scores. Call it M1. And this is only for the 0.1%. Similarly, if you are talking about for slot one, we also calculate the mean of the raw scores for all the slots together. The students scaled the score. Now you have things. Let's say the IMs will have this, obviously. They will have your raw score. Let's say you are the person writing it. Whatever your score is. You have your, let's your, your raw score is there. Now for the slot that you've written, there is a mean, there is a standard deviation. For all the three slots put together, there is a mean and there is a standard deviation. In addition, there is also a mean of the 0.1% or the 99.9 .9 plus percentile students, the absolutely the top 0.1 percentile students, the mean is scored. And then a simple formula is used. Your raw score will be, your final raw score will be the original raw score minus what we call it G1 into M to the power 0.1 minus G by M1 to the power 0.1 minus G1 plus G. This is, a, this is not, out of the blue, this is an information given by the IIM CAT site. It's a very simple thing. So first thing you need to understand is that your raw score will not continue to be raw score. That will change as per what you have written, as per what everybody else has written in your uh, slot, as per what everybody else has written in that full three slots, and also the 0.1% of them in your slot, as well as 0.1% of them put together of the entire country. Where does it go? What does it mean to you? Here it is. Take the case where you got a raw score. I'm going to give you an example. Just understand this. Take a case that you got a raw score of 50 out of the 78. Let's say I'm not changing the number of questions. Let's say there are still 26 questions in the uh, verbal section. This could be 23, 24, 25, 26. Doesn't matter. It will be similar. 
Let's say you got 50. Wow, that's great. Also, if you assume that slot one was difficult compared to the slots two and three, and let's say for simplicity's sake, two and three are very similar in nature. What happens then? So some of the assumptions I'm making here, let's say I'll find the mean of the slot one verbal is 30, the SD is 10, therefore G1 is 40, mean of the 0.1%. Now the toppers will not change. Let's say that it's 72, it could be 68 also. I'm just giving you a number, 72 for the absolute top 0.1 percentile students, top 1%, 0 0.1% students. Typically, these guys get the high scores, whether or not the paper is, in that sense, very difficult. Let's say the mean of slot two and slot three is higher. Remember, I am taking the mean is 30. I am saying that the other two slots were easier, and therefore, the mean is 39 and 39. Together, the mean will be 30 plus 39 plus 39 by three, which is 36. Let the standard deviation for two of them will be less because it's an easier paper. Maybe actually it will be more, but let's say it's eight and 8.5. Some numbers I'm taking. So you will get the overall G as 44.5. Your G, by the way, was 40. What happens if all the 0.1% of students of all the slots are considered? Let's say it is 73 because, because your slot was difficult. The other two slots are easy. So the 0.1 of the overall will be slightly more than 72. And let's say the mean of 0.1 for slot 2 and slot 3 is 75 because it's higher. Then what will happen? Okay. Then what will happen? Let's see the effect of normalization. The same formula used. What you will get, you started off with 50, remember, you will actually end up 53.4 with the same calculation. So a 50 became, sorry, becomes, it should be becomes, a, it becomes a 53.4. And then someone who got 15 slot two, now it's an easier slot. What happens to him or her? His scale score becomes 47.5 and so on. A 50 became a 47.5 in slot two, it scaled it down and a 50 became a 53.4, it scales up. Now, likewise, the overall exam two, slot one, slot two, slot three. If the paper, so those of you are writing slot one, don't worry about it for a simple reason that it will scale up. And don't be too happy about an easy paper, but it'll, it will get slot, uh, scaled down if your slot in your section is low. It's not just only for the entire slot, but it's also section dependent as well as the overall paper dependent. And that's all. So why am I doing this? Why is this important? It's important to understand that, look, whatever paper comes in, please try to do the best of it. There are lots of theories going around. You need to attempt only 10 questions to get a 90 percentile or a 95 percentile, which is maybe true, which may be true. But please understand if the paper is very easy, you will need a 12. Similarly, in DI, there is a myth going around that you should do only two sets to get a 95 percentile or a 90 percentile, which is true if the paper is normal. Let's say the paper is very easy you will probably need three sets. And that's about 12 questions, 36 marks. If the paper is very difficult, maybe it's just five questions. So don't go with double guessing what the paper is. Middle of the paper, very difficult. Of course, you will get to know what is happening in the paper. Maybe you're not doing it well. Please understand that everybody else also probably will not be doing it well. Similarly, if you're doing it well, you should be happy about it and don't think about the rest of them. That's the attitude that you need to go with. If you do that, my friends, my bet is you will crack the CAT exam very well. Wish you all the very best for CAT from all of us at Career Launcher. Thank you so much and hope that you will crack it out of shape. Thank you.